So Sue has not been honest with me. Um, I thought I was coming for a campaign event. I didn't know that I was coming for a fellowship in this anointed atmosphere of worship. My dear fathers and mothers in the Lord, I'm extremely grateful for the opportunity to stand before you and to discuss matters that border on the development and forward march of our dear nation. I bring you greetings from our father, our leader, our mentor, our coach, the flag bearer of our great party, the one who has been president before and by the grace of God is going to be president again. The one we call the nation builder, and by the grace of God, the incoming president of the Republic of Ghana, His Excellency John Ramani Mangala. We are here for a simple reason, and that reason is that our dear nation, Ghana, urgently requires a rescue. There is no gain saying the fact that our country is in a total mess. The kind of catastrophic challenges that our country currently finds herself has never been witnessed in the history of Ghana. This nation ought to be rescued. And John Ramani Mahama is leading the charge. Our brother Susu is doing his part in this wonderful constituency of Medina. But we know that we cannot do it without the Church of Christ. Because the Church of Christ is a ground and pillar of truth. And that is where you come in. You have a, an important and a crucial role to play in this struggle. Without you, our country cannot know peace and prosperity. The Bible says that by prophets, God delivered the children of Israel from oppression. And by prophets, he established them in prosperity. If Ghana will be delivered from the kind of decay we presently find ourselves, and if Ghana will see peace, progress, true development and transformation, it has to be with the involvement of the church. That is what the NDC believes in, and that is why we are here. And what we're doing here is in fulfillment of scripture. Uh, the Bible says that in the last days, the mountain of the Lord, which is the church of Christ, shall be established as the highest of the mountains. Yeah. And men shall flow to it for solutions and for guidance. And that is why we have come in all humility to seek your support, to seek your counsel, to seek your guidance, and to seek your prayers. Because without Christ, I'm not saying without God, because these days people bastardize the word God. There are all manner of gods. And those who shy away from this feet always hide behind the cloak of God. And we are not ashamed of Jesus Christ. We mention his name in the way we are. And that is why I think that Medina is blessed to have somebody like Susu standing as a member of parliament. A man who sincerely, you can see that this is not a man who is campaigning for power, but a man who sincerely loves God. A man who sincerely fears God. You can see it. This is not artificial. This is organic. Praise the Lord. So, that is why we are here. It doesn't matter your political affiliation. Today, I'm just coming from a TV program, and I have cause to say that in 44 days, the election we are going to have is not an election between the NDC and the NPP, no. It's an election between good and evil. It's an election between light and darkness. That is what it is. And even those in the NPP who have a conscience, those who have love for country, know that there ought to be a change. They know. 
Never in the history of our country has this nation been subjected to this wanting rape and abuse. Look, we've always had challenges as a country. This is not the first time we're experiencing hardships. Right from the days of Gorgeous Beck to the days of Osajifu to the days of Mahama, times were hard in Ghana. But if we'll be honest with ourselves, politics aside, you will agree with me that the kind of hardships we are experiencing today, Ahuchile we dear, is like none other. Anamewa. It's just too much. It is just too much. But it is unjustifiable. It is unacceptable that we should be in this state. Because the government we have today is the most resourced government since independence. No government has been this lucky and this blessed, if I can put it that way. But they have turned the blessing into a curse because of their greed and their selfishness. As of December 2016, the public debt of Ghana was just 120 billion cities. That is all borrowings from Nkrumah to John Mahama. You're talking about Nkrumah, Kutuka, Efrifa, Akufu, Echampo, Liman, Rollins, Kufu, Atamels of Blessed Memory, and John Mahama. All of them put together public debt of 120 billion. And we're able to service that debt. We could service the debt. We could pay the interest. We could pay principal that was due. And these guys called us names. They said we're borrowing too much. They said Mahama was incompetent. They said, yet you see Kasus welcome there. I'm sure you remember. Even Baumiadi, he said, we don't even have to borrow. The money is here. He's worked at the Bank of Ghana before. And that if we told the roads in Ghana, we will be able to raise enough revenue to do all the roads. You know, no Christian who fears God could have said the kind of things Baumiadi and PP said back then. Because there are no political party can fulfill all its promises. It doesn't happen anywhere in the world. So I have no beef with the MPP if they are unable to fulfill some of their manifesto promises. But some of the things they told us were not even manifesto promises. Clear lies. I mean, vote for us. How can you, aspiring to be a leader of a developing country like Ghana, say that vote for us and we will not borrow? We will be able to raise money to do all your rules. That is not a field promise. It's a clear lie. You say that vote for us and in 18 months, no community in Ghana will have a water or a toilet problem. Vote for us and we will not even do asphalt roads. We will give you concrete roads. The economy will grow and grow and grow and there will be jobs and jobs and jobs. What did they say? We will do, we will build a factory in every district. Build a dam in every village. Look at, look at what they said. Every village. Not even a district or a constituency. A dam in every village. They said all this is we will give every constituency one million dollars every year. And people believe this and voted for them. Today, our public debt, we stood at 120 billion from the days of Osajifu to Muhammad. Stands at 761 billion. And that is even just as of August. Because by now it is across 800 billion. From 120 to 761. So for the first time in the history of Ghana, we have defaulted on our debt obligations. This is not like what happened at the Champon. Under a Champon, we had Yen Tria. He was a soldier. He could pay those debts, but he said he won't pay. So that was Yen Tria. What we are in today is not Yen Tria. Yen to me in day, Yen Tria. That is what we are faced with. And who is going to pay that debt? Is it a good one who is 18 years old? No. It's our children and their children's children. Good leaders come to bequeath a heritage for the next generation. Bad leaders come 
to steal, to kill, to destroy, and to equip debts and liabilities to the next generation. That is what they have done to God. Today, look at our water bodies. Those water bodies don't know NPC, they don't know NPP. All our water bodies are looking coffee brown. And human beings are drinking from these river bodies. I'm just coming from the Ashanti region. It is so sad. And today, women, pregnant women, who are drinking this mercury cyanide lead polluted water bodies, are suffering from damaged fetus. Some are giving birth to children without limbs, children without eyes, children without nose. I'm not saying it. The Ghana Medical Association has said it. You can Google it. Our collective survival as a people is threatened. So the struggle we are engaged in, this is not an ordinary campaign. No. We are engaged in a righteous struggle to redeem the very soul of our nation. The nation has been corrupted. All systems bastardized. Nothing is working, nobody cares. And today, journalists who are rather exposed in this world are coming under attack. They are becoming the victims. And the criminals are becoming the heroes. I'm sure you heard the sad story of an investigative journalist who works with Joy FM, Erastus. He just went to one of these Galatea sites to expose what was going on because they were polluting a river body. He was kidnapped, put in a truck, driven into a bush, given over 30 slaps, beaten to pop. Until then, nothing has happened to the perpetrators. Because the very leadership of the country is involved. They don't care about our collective survival as a people. To them, it's about money. And when you talk, because they have bought the conscience of some media men, they will bastardize the issues and reduce it to NPC and PV. Oh, you also did it. Oh, it also happened under your time. And then the real substance of the matter is lost. That is what we are grappling with. That is the problem we are grappling with. The youth cannot find jobs. People are just looking for money, not so they can make a living in Ghana, but so they can leave Ghana. The nurses are living in droves. The teachers are living in droves. People have lost confidence in Ghana. And if care is not taken, if this trend continues, I am genuinely, genuinely scared for our democracy. So there has to be a change. It doesn't matter your political affiliation. There has to be a change. And that is why I get excited when I hear voices of conscience in the MPP itself calling for change. As for Kennedy Ejabon, he said, change needs Ghana. Ghana doesn't need change. Change needs Ghana. He was the one who said that the MPP, they are grabbing and stealing like there is no tomorrow. He's more MPP than anybody. But they have even seen the truth. We've seen an MPP government before. We saw it before. It was not like this. How can you say that you are going to build a house for God and you deceive men of God that we in the Christian community revere to come and support you and they decide to support you but that was not their fault the Archbishop means well talking about Bishop Duncan Williams people like Dougie Ward Mills and all that these are men who will support any cause that will further the gospel so they thought that this government meant well they decided to participate in it. The government took 339 million cities from our taxes when they told us that they were not even going to use public funds. But forget about that. Me, I'm a Christian. Even if they use those funds and build God a magnificent temple like Solomon did, I would have been happy. Yeah. But you don't take 339 million cities, equivalent to 3.3 trillion cities. And all you use that money for is to dig a hole. And today when it rains, you have the biggest swimming pool in the world. And today men of God, like Pontius Pilate, are washing their hands from this project. 
they are fleeing from it like a plague. The archbishop has resigned. Isudanaba resigned. Like you are Mills resigned. All of them because they've seen that this project was not about God. It was about a man's greed. How dare you? How do you steal in the name of God? How? You are all men of God here. If we give you 339 million cities to build a house of God, a house for God, won't you build 10 times this chapel? 339 million. Go down the drain. And when you talk, this is politics. This is not politics. Imagine the jobs this man you could have created, the hospitals he could have built. I am not even talking about the buildings they demolished, the judges' mandalus, the passport office, buildings went worth millions of dollars, just like that. So I'm saying these things because you are the moral compass of our nation. And you must awaken your brethren, and by extension the nation, to what is going on. This is not a time to sit on the fence. To be quiet is to be complacent. Because the only way evil triumph is when good men decide to do nothing. Once upon a time, we have men of God in this country who always took turn to speak about the affairs of this country, the governance of this country. Today, we can't find them. I'm happy that at least we can find you. That gives me hope. So if the church of Christ is the ground and pillar of truth, then let's speak truth to duty bearers. Not only to the MPP, no, even to the NDC. When we err, when some of us make comments that can jeopardize the peace and stability of Ghana, that can affect the development of this country, we expect you, whether you voted for us or not, to call us to order. So that is why we are here. But I have a message from your mama for you. And that message is simple. All hope is not lost. Amen. Ghana still has a special place in the plans of God. This nation will not break. This nation will see prosperity. This nation will see leadership of integrity once again. Amen. And we have that duty to bring that to pass. By ensuring that we vote on 7 December. And we vote to bring about the change and the transformation we all yearn for. And John Mahama has said that he is a Christian. He's a son of the church. And he believes in the centrality of prayer and godly reverence to the progress of every nation. And so under his presidency, he will institute a national day of prayer and thanksgiving. That is going to be a day of intercession, a day for social cohesion, a day where the apostles and the old saints who are in Christ will smile at Ghana because they will see all denominations from the length and breadth of Ghana come together to worship God and to pray to God. That is going to happen on the job. The second thing John Mama says I should tell you 